lightning strikes thank you so much for tuning back into my channel please comment like and subscribe you know i post daily teachings and just um i'm just giving y'all the vibes the tea the universal game i got it all here and so that's wonderful okay that's so wonderful oh my god these crows just like decided oh hell no Oh, all you niggas is here. All these crows just lined up in front of my car. Like hella crows. But I'm not gonna be have fear because uh because <laughs> I'm on a higher frequency and I think they showed up. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get good vibes in, in into it because did you just hear that? Like there's hella crows that just came and surrounded my car. I swear to god, there's not even crows surrounding like other cars. Okay. What a way to start the video. So you can see that one right there. I'm not gonna move. I'm not I will I refuse to be threatened. I refuse to be threatened. Seriously, I refuse to be threatened. I'm gonna speak whatever I wanna speak. And if you know if you're spiritual, you know the spiritual realm is just um is just a lot of times it's smoke and mirrors. It um it is like just trying to scare you. Like, they're just trying to scare you and put you in, like, fear mode. <laughs> and it's not going to work because I, I've been past this. I've, I've been learned my, I learned my lessons. So, today's video, this powerful video that's clearly triggering people in the spiritual realm, is called The Anatomy of Presence. And so, The Anatomy of Presence, I decided to take a note. I woke up very early this morning to really channel and really um understand what presence is so i started my journey with being more present and being more aware in about 2021 but it didn't really oh my car's still on it didn't really make sense to me until um 2022 i no was it yeah 2022 because i was still in college and i remember it was like my 22nd birthday and i was sitting in my courtyard at my school and i was alone i was in the grass i was kind of looking at the stars um this was in arizona and i went to grand canyon university so comment if you if you went there because um that is that was my school and so <laughs> i was sitting in the grass and i was just you know just kind of meditating kind of thinking of like where i want to take my life and who i want to become and what is this like i think when i was like nobody ever talks about this but you go through like another period when you're in your 20s not a period but like another state of like um another puberty because you really just okay so also i noticed i don't look at the camera when i'm speaking but it's just because i want to stay focused on what my mental is trying to come up with but um you go through another puberty in your 20s that nobody ever tells you about and so um that was happening so my mind and consciousness were like shifting so bad so i was like what am i like i just went like 22 years without understanding what the hell i am and so that was creepy and that was scary because i'm like how the hell am i gonna be a human being i don't even know what i am i don't know what this is like i don't know what the vibes are <laughs> like i'm just I'm like, I just showed up and I just, I didn't bother to ask questions like, what am I made of? What, like, who am I? And so the 22 was like, okay, that was that moment. But I realized that's like a collective 22 year old thing where you're thinking about like, wait, what is consciousness and what is all like, what is, I mean, I knew I've had those moments where I was like, whoa, I'm alive, which by the way, that's actually God. Those moments when you are like, whoa, 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 I'm a like where am i <laughs> what is this like what is this like what is my mind in relationship to like reality that is like you tapping into god energy that i am this i am whoever i am that is who you that's god that's the, the awareness of god the loving awareness that's being like recognized right so um, after that, I decided to make a, like a mini goal because my birthday is like in the beginning of the year. So I made like a mini kind of newest resolution to just live the whole year present and not um, go in. He looks like a cartoon character. You know the movie Soul? <laughs> you know the movie Soul? He looked like that cartoon character, the one who played jazz. And so... Um, yeah, so I went through the whole year with that, with 
being present and being aware of my surroundings and just like capturing that and it shifted everything i think like that was probably more shifting than anything else i have ever done in terms of quality of like peace quality of mind quality of awareness quality of just being and existing in life in a more hyper aware and more intertwined state so this is actually very very crucial that you are somebody who can access the present moment very quickly because that is all that there truly is so in the bible it talks about there's a scripture that says it's in james chapter four how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow your life is like a morning fog it's here a little while then gone and so i used to be so like triggered by that i was like what are you talking about like life is not a puff of smoke i'm gonna like there was a sense of like i don't understand that so um but now i see it's like literally like life is like a puff of smoke because one yes where is yesterday is it in our pocket can I take out yesterday and go back there and live it? Can I make yesterday something different? Can I take it in, as a souvenir into tomorrow? No, it just disappears. And so the only place that the past lives is in our mind. And what happens is the, the only place where the past lives is in our mind. And the only place where the future lives is also in our mind. And so um, the only thing that exists is the eternal now. Um, it's an illusion. Time is an illusion. It's just something that we use to measure change, but it's not real. The, all there is is the current now. This is why when adults ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? They're actually speaking to your higher self and asking your higher self, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? My dream right? and your dream and your destiny is the free will of your higher self. Um, when adults ask a child, like, what, what is, and there's a child, like, walking by, which is, like, where I know, I know I'm on pace with where I'm going. And so, um, when your child and adult ask you, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? They're asking, channel your, your future self and tell us what you sense is there. And, um, the child answers. And so, of course, life happens, and then some adult tells some loser, I call them the losers of, of the universe, someone who has no access to magic, someone who has no access to source, someone who doesn't even recognize who they are, who doesn't understand the metaphysical, who is completely confused, completely clueless on what there is, is trying to take you down to their vibration. Those type of people who refuse to open their heart, who refuse to believe in the magic of reality those people they tell you oh that's not achievable oh you had this type of you know you you, you have these you have the all you your childhood trauma you, they are always at at saying like something is just not working so you cannot achieve that it's not for you it's for the, the other special people who are special the universe has made them special you're not the part of special people you're the normal people okay so um they tell you no that's not possible and so um but let me tell you something. I always say <sighs> what's meant to happen will always happen. You cannot change it. No one can. What's you can delay it, you can um you can you can throw distractions, but what needs to happen needs to happen. And so now back into what i was saying the anatomy of presence is that sometimes sometimes and so for me let's just talk about myself because the best teacher always teaches with their own life right and so my whole life i had these moments of awareness moments of i am this moments of godness awareness like oh like I'm in a car, like, what's a car? Like, what's a mirror? What is this? What is that? Those moments in the awareness. And you can have them as young as five. You can have, and they can happen um, later on in adulthood. But um, when you um, are are not practicing the, the art of presence, the art of awareness, when you're not practicing, you're probably stuck somewhere in your mind in the past or the future. Now, the questions are like, oh, Joy, Joy, well, something happened that in my past is so triggering and so, and so like, just so horrible that I just cannot get over it. Great. 
I know what to do with you. So first of all, depending on the level of trauma and depending on the level of insanity of the situation, um, definitely try and get basic, basic help with is just like the principles of life that you are unconditional love, unconditionally love them. That's the where you need to focus on the practical principles of life your unconditioning love you are absolutely perfect right now right now there's you're in the complete st state of awareness uh, i'm sorry perfection you are whole you are light you are stardust you are something amazing and no matter what other people say you have to totally ignore every voice you are amazing and so once you've understood that foundational part, you also can understand one thing that, one, the future is not set in stone. Even though there's destiny and all these things, it's not set. Like, the, the way I'm trying to say is that, like, you have power to manipulate all things into your favor. So, concerning the past as being um, something that your mind is creating as something that was in the past is that you the past is a 50 50 chance of being real like your brain is like our brains are designed to focus on things and have a very straight like um peripheral like you lack of peripheral it's just like you you're meant to focus so technically you actually could not have experienced some of the tra traumatic things in your life which is an ego death in itself because it's like a lot of us build our entire realities based off of trauma things that have happened up in the past and for them to may or may not have been real is a little bit like what but that is supposed to just loosen the grip of victimization that the past can create. It is not something that I'm saying, like, completely forget about your past. But I'm saying that, like, you can also understand that there's a chance that it wasn't actually the way it happened. And it takes someone like me to say that because it takes someone like me to have been, that, been there and know what it, well, how the past can pull your energy. So this is also one thing that I want... The anatomy of presence also requires that you cannot allow your energy to be pulled by the past and the future. The art of presence is pulling all the energy. So let's say you have a trip. You're in the present moment. It's a like a, an amazing trip that you're excited for, but you're you're always taking your mind there. Yes, it's exciting. Yes, it's like something positive that you. But the same presence that you're avoiding now because you want to use it on the trip is not conducive because you want to practice presence. So when you're on the trip, you can also be present. Um, it is an illusion. All there is is presence. And so embracing it is so important because one, there's the reason it's called presence is because there's presence everywhere. There's gifts. There's little things that you get to see and little witness that is the present, that is the life, that is making the accumulation of books into your life. So now I'm looking like, for example, when I was talking, because I've heightened my awareness and heightened my ability to perceive things that are like beyond the space of my arms, right? Which is actually just you because we are the an extension of the universe, right? Our imagination and our universe are the same thing. Like this is, there's no separation. A lot of people think imagination means fantasy. It does not mean fantasy because everything that's in reality was created from the imagination. If I had a notebook, first it was a thought of like, I want papers that are connected to something that I can carry everywhere. Like it's like it starts as a thought. So therefore our imagination is an extension of our reality. So why well, this is your Bible always says, don't bother thinking about negative things. Because when you think about negative things, you're confessing to the universe that you want it in your reality because our imagination is an extension of our reality. If you have an imagine before it, you see a concert, for example. That concert took decades to make. It wasn't just something that you're seeing now. It started as a thought. So our thoughts are projecting our reality. 
Our reality is con conducive and created by our own thoughts and our own awareness. And so, um, and this is proven by quantum physics that atoms do not even exist unless you're bringing your awareness which is why i say the awareness is is i am so it's so important that you are fixing your awareness in the present moment because in the present moment that's where it's presence this is what i was saying like i was talking to you guys i was looking here and i see some smoke lifting from the camera for lifting from this car in front of me because there's like little morning dew droplets on the car because it's like about like 9 9 a.m right now and um there's little wa water droplets on it and oh look i see it now and the smoke from the the sun is like lifting the um morning dew from the car so it looks like it's smoking it looks like it's on fire and so stuff like that is just supposed that is that's what that's what you came here for you came here to just accidentally witness smoke lifting from a car you're like it's actually quite simple living in that awareness of presence is all that there is because of this all there there is and so uh, la, 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 many people want to escape now so um um since the past is not real we can also rewrite our past we can rewrite our past to fit a narrative that fits a future self that we want. And this is important because when I say past and future, I'm dealing with the the way, the energy, the energy that your past holds and the energy that you want your future to hold. So the way you meditate on your past is how it's going to reflect in your future. So now, for example, um, in my heart, you know, um, so this is going to be really vulnerable and i i want to use i don't want to i don't want to scare you with really extreme examples though because i want this to be something that you guys can implement on a daily basis because if i say traumatic then you're going to be like you you only use it for traumatic things but that's not going to the way you use this kind of mentality for traumatic things is by building up momentum of using it on, on individual things on smaller things so let's say this Okay, so let's say my, my, in the, let's say in the future, I want to be, I, um, I don't want to say doctor, something that you guys like, something that's cute and aspirational. Like, let's say in the future, I want to have my own YouTube channel right and so i'm having faith i'm having lack of faith in that i'm saying like oh it's not for me like i i can't do it i can't do it in the past look at look at my past like this is what happened in my life anytime i was on camera i always hide away anytime that i like you know people take a picture of me i cringe anytime that i like you know see who i was in the past i have you know problems of it just witnessing myself i've there like i feel insecure in the past people have made fun of my skin color the way i look certain features about my face um i just can't like there's no way look at my past like i can't have that in the future look at my past okay one you cannot change those things yes i know that because it's happened to me and these are the things that go in my head and they go and by the way they go in through every youtuber's head like we're all thinking the same thing oh my god no there's no way that that good stuff can be for me but what i was saying is that like you go in your past and you're thinking of like all the times like you're supporting this narrative through events through your past one we cannot change that right it may have happened may or may not have happened um but your subconscious has accepted that that happened to you what you can do is rewrite that past to fit you f f to fit yourself so now instead of thinking of like in the past people were making fun of me for you know how i looked or what i felt like or just who i am um my energy or the, the decisions i've made in the past or people made me feel small and tiny which by the way is all an illusion nobody can make you feel anything you you choose to feel that you choose to subscribe like yeah i am going to subscribe that i am worthless yes someone told you that they gave you a contract here's the worthless contract here's the contract. that this is who you are this is if it's, if it's from like corporate or business professional 
you're ugly you're worthless um i don't like your teeth and you you just will never have anything good in life when someone tells you that and you say yeah they made me feel like that this is what happened i signed co-signed it yes i will feel like that so can the person who gave you that say like can they force you to sign things no then the no the signature would be nullified right the court would say well this person wasn't you forced them to write it like you the, the, the you it wouldn't work in the the force of uh in the law of court but if you say like wait no i don't want to sign that like i know actually i'm freaking amazing now no actually i'm like worthy no actually i'm that bitch no actually that i deserve all the great things in life no actually i'm actually no actually yeah and you don't sign it then they give it then the contract to the next person because one these people are not looking to bully you they're looking for somebody to bully Okay, they're not looking, they're not even coming for you. They're coming for somebody who allowed them to bully them. Because if you don't allow them to bully them, they won't bully you, they'll bully somebody else. Because it's not about you, it's about you were there at the time that they decided to bully, right? Because we take such deep offense towards what other people say, the same way we, because we take deep offense from our own thoughts. We think our thoughts are actually us speaking sometimes, and they're not really you, they're just something, it's like a water dripping in a, in a faucet, it's not really you. So back what I was saying is that you can manipulate those past events into something fruitful so when for example for me i have this specific memory <sighs> jesus christ <laughs> i have a specific memory where i was in high school and i was um it was it was like towards the end of lunch and there was this particular boy his name was um antonio even though his name was not antonio antonio was obsessed with me like looking back on it it was more obsession it was just like he always had to bu anytime you see me he had to bully me and so he had to just make me feel small and make me feel very very like anxious to go to school and like very sad and just like he would always make me feel really 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 bad and um you know at that time like i just didn't say anything because i didn't know what to say i was like what do you say about someone who's just coming for you for no reason like you know what i'm saying um and it all i know is that make me felt made me feel really bad anyways that guy ended up coming later on and apologizing to me and then asking me on a date what was i trying to say from that how can i that whole gist from the day he met me and started bullying me to the day he asked me to date that's like as long as I've known him, like, from bullying to, like, being romantically interested in me, I realized that, um, how, it's very traumatic, right? Because I don't, like, it made me feel like men are actually, like, so stupid. Like, it's actually not even something that, like, I'm willing to negotiate about. Like, it just made me realize, like, they're just actually very, like, emotionally underdeveloped. And, like, to really, like, their parents, something happened where genetically they're actually so slow. And so rewriting this in a way where when that happened, I punched the shit out of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I punched him in the face. You know, I kicked him in the stomach. You know, I got suspended for a week and then I moved on. Like, rewriting that makes me... F where the situation where I feel empowered and he left me alone is what helps me create a future that next time that happens... Yeah, I'm going to kick you and punch you in the face and kick you in the stomach. Like, no, I'm not going to be nice to you because you were freaking light. You bullied me because you're attracted to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to participate in that. And so what I'm going to say is that, like, when you... If I had reacted like that in the first time it happened, then I wouldn't have been who I am now. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, you can rewrite your features. Like, sometimes I even add, like, butterflies. Like, I'll add, like, butterflies spinning around his head. Or I'll add, like, rain clouds of, like, Tootsie Rolls <laughs> when, it, when that happened. And just kind of rewrite that, you know, traumatic situation in a way that brings comedy. In a way that brings joy and the light into my life. Or just rewriting that those traumatic events in in a way that like a water slide was there or maybe um the swati show 
the SWAT team showed up and started doing like a musical theater act. And so, <laughs> so you can, you have that power to just rewrite your history, to rewrite the, the frequency that you're going to be in, right? Because everything we're doing is so we can be in a better frequency. We don't want to feel sad. We don't want to feel like, we don't, the first thing we don't want to feel is powerless because there's no happiness that exists within powerlessness. And so that's what I was going to say. Um, yeah. So the last thing I want to mention about this is that as you begin to change and revise your past to fit a narrative that where you are empowered, where you are joyful, where you, where there's joy, um, and power and soul and spirit and aliveness existing in the moment, um, one, this will affect your future because naturally, like I just said, your vibration will be higher. And like I said, when your vibration high, what happens? You attract better things. And so when, um, so, um, the, this is going to be tricky for some of you because you have identified so deeply with the past being real, the past being solid, bringing the past and the future into the present and to, um, and not allowing thoughts to drunk the faucet let me tell you one all things can be changed all things can be changed um to the point that they are no longer what they are and that's what a true alchemist does they don't when an alchemist changes something they don't have any remnant of what was before there if the the original alchemist turned dirt into gold or lead base metals into gold and so when they turned the base metals into gold there was no lead inside the gold. It was pure gold. So when I ask for transformation, it has to be pure transformation for it to believe, for it to 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 soak into your subconscious mind. So, um, so there's a specific study that was given, the last one, um, interview with the scar remove so the first the, there's just uh, there's a study that was done where people were they had like prosthetic makeup and they made a scar on their face like a, a huge like those type of scars that you know like you know, like some kind of like traumatic like serious traumatic scar on their face and so they told the, the people that they're going to go for an interview a job interview with the scar on and they're going to they have the job of assessing whether they whether um they get the job even though they have the scar on the face so now the people were told they have the scar that people were told to go on the scar then they said put them back in the room to go and fix it up right so as the makeup artist who was fixing up the scar was fixing it up they removed a little bit they removed all of it so when the people went into the interview they went into the interview with thinking that the scar was on their face and there wasn't and doing the interview they said 100 percent of the people who did that they experienced deep deep sense they they in, they were interviewed in a sense in a way that the scar was still affecting how they were communicating themselves throughout the world that even though the scar wasn't there they they were acting as if it was there and therefore they didn't get the job right they're having this and they believe that this they didn't get the job because of the scar but when they looked at their face there was no scar so what it's saying is that like sometimes what i learned from that was that sometimes you have scars that you think people can see people can understand people know uh and people can understand about people you think that like there's so many different variables preventing you from doing something but in reality there's really none sometimes and sometimes there is none and it's just your subconscious brain tricking you into living in the state of consciousness with all this um with things of your past there so i will always say like i'm going to make a whole video about taking control of your past and bringing it into um um a vibration that fits into the the orchestra of the end and so um just like you know and um embracing it and living with the subconscious model of that 
um because you know yeah the past is not real anyways thank you so much for watching today i hope that i really blessed you with some knowledge and and i hope that um this video was really um it really took you to a place of deeper understanding of how to engage with the present moment in a whole way thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again tomorrow bye